In this episode of Dolce Vita, we define the meaning of modern luxury living. Check out furniture designs with a trendy, artsy flair. Have a taste of the contemporary izakaya experience. And take a look at fashion design inspired by India's rich heritage of textile traditions. Have you ever experienced days when leaving home for the gym feels like a workout in itself? Having a gym that is just steps away from your home is probably the best way to motivate yourself to exercise. And with a variety of fitness activities and games that train your body, benefiting you physically and emotionally, getting your body in shape is not a daunting task after all. When it comes to hosting a party, finding the right venue is everything. Creating an at-home party is of course cozy and intimate and will definitely make your guests feel special. But if you are looking to throw a party that caters to a big group of family and friends, having it at a spacious function room equipped with kitchen facilities, or a fancy lush green corner with BBQ facilities at your clubhouse will just hit the spot. You can unwind and enjoy good times with your loved ones without traveling too far. The landscape interacts with the clubhouse design because it connects back to this idea of nature. We wanted to focus on this idea of creating a better lifescape. We focused on also the concept of the seven wonders of the world. It was all about creating an immersive experience and touching on all senses so you could hear, see, smell, touch. It was meant to be a full uh, immersive experience. We were focused on this connecting of different facilities through the landscape. The landscape is so important because it actually connects everything together. A very important element in the landscapes is the idea of the barbecue area. It focuses on this idea of farm to table. It references back to the lush landscapes. The lifestyle of city dwellers can generally be described as having too much to do and never having enough time. So in your downtime, it'd be nice to live in a place with lots of luxury amenities. Agree? That's right, Des. Your home environment can directly impact your lifestyle. Being able to find such a beautiful green landscape at your doorstep after a long day at work and various fitness facilities where you can work out and stay healthy, it means that you can live, work, play, all in the comfort of your own home. After the break, enjoy an array of reimagined Japanese izakaya favorites and discover the beauty of Indian-inspired luxury fashion. Joyce, from a traveler's perspective, do you love Japan? Well, I think everyone loves Japan. If you're into anime, you can always go to the Akihabara district. If you're into shopping, there's always a lot of innovative things you can buy. And if you're into food, well, Japan is a food paradise. I know, I miss the fantastic food in Japan, especially the small dishes and skewers served at the izakaya. Well, izakaya is like a place where local people love to hang out, whether it's with their colleagues or their friends. The vibrant atmosphere, along with the good food. Even us travelers love to go there just to experience that kind of culture. Uh, we try and use whatever's fresh, uh, working with the Japanese seasons, the Japanese market. Very much we want to bring a modern touch to classical flavors. We're not looking to discover or create flavor explosion, but just keeping things tasty. Classics work for a reason, but just in a modern approach. A new dish, uh, it's more of uh, something to celebrate summer. Personally, I dislike salads, so this is the closest I've come to a salad. I find salads boring because they lack texture. Every bite is a bit monotonous, so we've tried to mix it up with the akami. We've stuffed it with negi toro and some pickles. So each bite of the dish brings a different texture, a different taste sensation. You've got heat, you've got crunch, and then of course you've got the freshness of the wasabi greens and the dressing, which also has hints of wasabi. 
The color token I think is more interesting. They monochromatic or black, gray. We bring a bit of heat to the classic flavors uh, with some fermented vegetables. Oysters, caviar, beef is a fabulous pairing. Uh, we've paired that instead of bread. We've done uh, the rice crackers again. And just the combination of the heat, the salinity of the caviar, I think works fabulously. And the smoked oyster cream really brings it together. Though some people like to kick off the evening at the isakaya, ordering savory snacks and meaty skewers, I personally prefer having lighter dishes and vegetables, such as the salad. It's full of classic Japanese flavors, especially the wasabi dressing. It's not too complicated, but it's the perfect balance for all the ingredients. Well, I think when it comes to appetizers, there are actually a lot of choices. For me, I have this beef tartare topped with this smoked oyster sauce and a bit of caviar, along with a squid ink cracker. The flavors really complement each other, and it's very delicious. I think sushi here is something uh, quite unique. Uh, very much uh, with this place, we don't want to be known for fish and rice, so we've gone a bit of a different route. So we're trying to combine the fish and the rice in new ways, which is quite a challenge. Working quite a bit with different rices, we found one we're quite happy with, and working forward on the fish. At the moment, we do a wagyu sushi and a tuna sushi. Uh, we're combining the three cuts of tuna. One is marinated and the other two are natural. So when it's consumed in one bite, it's quite a big burst of flavor, which I haven't seen or experienced. So the beef dish we're currently doing are going with black and white as the theme, and also combining that with root vegetables, uh, mainly garlic, leeks, onions. So everything on the plate has an element of that. Uh, this beef's a bit more meaty than, say, the ones from Kobe. Uh, it's still, of course, fat and luscious, but has a bit more texture. So we roast that off over charcoal, we rub it in a leek ash, and on the plate we have a black garlic puree, a white garlic puree, and we're using a jiao bai and the lily bulb. It all combines quite nicely. Sushi is one of the must-have. This sushi platter is made from fish fresh from Tokyo and wagyu beef from Kagoshima. It's so good. Talking about wagyu beef, I really like this dish here. The chef seared the wagyu beef and then used two types of garlics. There's white garlic and black garlic. The mixture really brings the umami flavor out of the beef. Delicious. Though the creative Japanese-style snacks are so yummy that you'll keep wanting more, remember to leave some space for dessert. Here, the smooth brown butter ice cream is matched with delightful milk crisps. Every bite is a joy to the palate. They say izakaya with a modern edge is becoming more popular these days, and it's easy to see why. Luxury to me means timeless. It means storytelling. Pieces that make you feel luxurious, pieces that are very special, and I think that crafts, old crafts, revival of techniques and crafts, I find all of that very luxurious. In the past, people feel that like Indian fashion doesn't suit modern context. Indeed, India has become an increasingly focal point for fashion industry. We're not only talking about manufacturing sector, but we're talking about the whole fashion value chain. From an important sourcing hub to an attractive consumer market, I believe fashion designers have played an important part in reviving and promoting Indian fashion all across the world. Hello, Tanya. Hi, Yancy. Why do you think there is an Indian-inspired luxury market, and why did you choose Hong Kong? Well, the first part of that question is much easier. I was born here, so I'm a third-generation Hong Kong girl very proud about that. So why Hong Kong? Because it's home. The majority of my customers are local Chinese ladies and they love the artistry of India. I think it resonates with them. I think the history of a piece, embroideries, has definitely worked. So how do you keep competitive? I think a couple of things. So we're never going to have like a fall winter and then a spring summer. I focus mostly on embroideries, fabrics, techniques, craftsmanship, sustainability, one-off pieces, uh, slow fashion. So we're competitive in the sense that we will do a very short run of a print, for example, 
or we will develop a technique like a bandini, you know, using colors that we've put together. We don't do a lot of mass, mass um, production, so small capsule collections, a lot of hand embroidery, a lot of stories about craftsmanship and the techniques, and I think that keeps us competitive and relevant because we're very unique. What do you love about Indians' craftsmanship and how would you describe it? <laughs> how long do you have, seriously? I mean, my love affair with the crafts of India is just, I think we haven't even touched the surface of what this magnificent country has to offer as far as the crafts. For me, it's the history. I, I feel as a country, India has beautiful, not only embroideries, but fabrics you know, that haven't been explored properly yet. So I'm always excited. I'm never gonna stop being excited about this. And what kind of textiles, fabric, and designs do you use in your design? We pretty much 99% of the time use pure fabrics. So pure silk, pure georgettes, pure cottons, uh, pure cashmere. Very, very rarely will we use a synthetic. Even the dyes I like to use is a lot of the um, traditional, just natural dyes. So we try to keep very clean, very sustainable in the brand. That's very, very important to me. And how would you describe your designs? I would describe as timeless classic pieces more than trendy pieces. Like I said before, we don't really follow the trends. I, I remember growing up, my mum, if I'd ask her if I was wearing a dress, does it look pretty? She goes, well, I don't know. Is it fashionable? Is it this? And I'm like, mom, fashion is about what you feel looks pretty on you and your body. It's not about what a magazine is saying is fashionable this season. I think as a woman evolves and gets more confident in who she is, she knows what's gonna work on her. What's your favorite piece and what do you love about it? That is a really hard question. Like I said, I've been doing this for two decades, but my favorite dress would be the goddess dress. Um, I love that because it was through this dress that we got into wholesale and I designed it using a piece of a sheet. I had an idea in my head about what I wanted. I wanted a Grecian yet Indian resort dress. So I had it in my head, but I didn't know how to describe it to anybody when I was working with the artisans. So I literally had to get a sheet, wrap it around my body with my friend who, who was with me. And we created this, this iconic piece called the, the goddess dress. Different fabric, different colors, different print, but exactly the same shape. Wow. So that's my favorite. If you had to choose a piece for me, which one would you choose for me? Well, now that we're getting into summer and you've got such a lovely frame, I think, you know, a beautiful summer little dress. I think the Maya dress. I'm going to put you in a Maya really? dress. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. Fashion helps interpret artistry and craft culture of a place, like the piece I just tried on today. The elegant and charming print and pattern trying to convey the glamour and magnificent of Indian style. I'm sure Indian fashion items are no longer exclusive for traditional ethnic occasions. They are chic enough for daily mix and match. That's all the time we have for this week's episode. If you want to find out more about what we've introduced, remember to log on to our website. In the coming weeks, sit back and take pleasure in gourmet food from around the world. Explore ways to look gorgeous. Keep up with the latest trend and connect with inspiring people from different backgrounds. Be sure to tune in again next time. <laughs>